And now to the latest on the condition of Buffalo Bills safety Damar Hamlin. The 24-year-old remains in critical condition this morning at a Cincinnati hospital after collapsing and suffering a cardiac arrest during Monday night's game against the Bengals. Hamlin received CPR for several minutes on the field before being taken away in an ambulance. The game was later suspended and then postponed. There has been an outpouring of support for Hamlin since then. Niagara Falls was lit in blue last night. That's what you see on your screen right now. That's for Hamlin's Buffalo Bills, as well as the Bengals Stadium where Hamlin collapsed. NBC News correspondent Maura Barrett is in Cincinnati, and we're also joined again today by NBC Sports host and reporter Corey Robinson. Good morning to both of you. We're happy to have you with us. So let's begin, Maura, with you. We're hearing from Hamlin's family. What's the latest on his condition? What do we know at this hour? Well, here at UC Health, Jamar Hamlin remains in critical condition, but we do know from a family spokesperson who tweeted overnight that his vitals returned to normal and he was able to sleep with the assistance of a breathing tube. Doctors continued to run tests overnight, but obviously we're still waiting on any more details in terms of his specific condition after suffering that cardiac arrest on the field on Monday night. Uh, the NFL has said that the, his heartbeat had been restored uh, before he left the field, before the ambulance took him. Here and he had spent the night in the intensive care unit. His family releasing a statement yesterday saying that they're expressing gratitude and thanks uh, for all of the support they've received from the community, but also wanting to acknowledge the speed uh, at which the medical uh, professionals responded and were able to get him here uh, so quickly. And they just say that they're waiting minute by minute, hour by hour, uh, but that he is fighting. Savannah. Corey, let's bring you in here. Now, of course, if you were watching the game, if you watched our coverage yesterday, you saw the faces of those players. They were on both teams visibly upset by what they witnessed on the field. And now the NFL is facing criticism over its handling of the incident and the amount of time it took to actually postpone the game rather than just suspend it or give the players a little bit of time. Can you explain what goes into making these types of operational decisions and where that criticism stands today? Well, the criticism, I think, lies on this one word of, of trauma. And because what you're doing is you're basically exposing trauma, not only to, you know, obviously, the players on the field who have to sit there and, and watch their, their teammate um, and their loved one, you know, potentially battle for their life. But that's what we were watching. This is a life and death scenario. And then you also think about, you know, this is being streamed live into mm -hmm. the homes of millions and millions of Americans, little kids watching with their parents. So we're talking about a communal trauma. Um, and that, I think, is where the, the criticism li lies. That's on, like, why, why televise that for so long. But I do think that the, the, the correct thing, and I think Peter King talked about this in, in his podcast last night as far as how the, the NFL handled this. Um, you want to be able to acquire all the information. So the fact that both coaches were on the phone with the league and the Roger Goodell, the commissioner, was trying to get information from every single person, every stakeholder from the NFLPA, who's working closely with the coaches and the league and the medical professionals from both teams. Um, I, that's how those kind of conversations are generally um, arrived, have reached at. But I do think, Savannah, the, the interesting question is, well, if you want to make the right decision, how long will you take? But do you need to live stream it? You know, mm -hmm. and I think that was the, the, the biggest question is why, why was the trauma live streamed? Yeah, absolutely. With with no information and everyone just sort of watching in confusion. Absolutely. Um, Maura, we've seen this major outpouring of support for Hamlin across the country. That includes millions of dollars raised for a toy drive campaign he has on GoFundMe. Tell us more about how he's being honored. <laughs> Well, there's just been an absolute flood of prayers and love and support. Several Buffalo Bills players staying here in Cincinnati to make sure that they can uh, give that support to their teammate. Uh, people, fans showing up here yesterday, a small prayer vigil being held. Uh, lots of social media reaction in terms of that support because this was this is a young athlete who was at the beginning of his career and had a lot of drive to fulfill his dream. And he clearly conveyed that uh, to the, his fans and a lot of his teammates. And that that impact is not just here in Cincinnati or in Buffalo. It's in places and other places that he touched, like Pittsburgh, where he's from. I want to hear from the Steelers head coach who spoke about the drive uh, Hamlin has. Man, it's a really personal thing for me, uh, being a Pittsburgher. And, and that young man being a Pittsburgher, I've known that guy probably since he was about 12. Um, just got a lot of res respect and love for him as a human being, um, his commitment 
to the pursuit of his uh, goals and dreams of doing what it is he's doing right now, which is playing in the NFL. That sentiment echoed across uh, fans and players that we've heard from that commitment to the game as well as to his community uh, as those prayers continue to come in as we wait for more updates on Hamlin's condition. Guys, Corey, also Monday night's postponement, of course, comes at a critical point of the season with the final week of the regular season scheduled for this weekend. And we heard yesterday that this particular game will not be played out this week. Talk to us about the challenges this poses for the league going forward. I honestly, so that, I honestly don't think it really poses as, as much challenges as you would think, because on first blush, you think, okay, well, this is a huge game, and once again, like, this doesn't matter in, in the scope because we're talking about life and death, right? But it, it, so th th there are three teams competing for the number one, um, the Clinton number one spot in the AFC. So you're thinking, okay, this is home field advantage and a first round bye. But once again, the NFL has made it very clear, and I, and I think this is a good thing, the, the strength and speed with which they've spoken with a unified voice from you know the Bengals president some coming out and saying that love and humanity has come to the forefront, that we're seeing the human side of the game, the fan outpouring that we just heard about from Mara, um, you know, the, the league office saying, look, we're not even thinking about re rescheduling this game or postponing this game in the current moment. We're focused on DeMar Hamlin, the NFL PA, the players, the referees coming out, their association from all all levels, everyone's saying we're focused on player safety. I, I think it'd be inconsistent for the league to then say, okay, well, how can we schedule this game going mm -hmm. into the final regular season? I, I think finally, the, the last point here, if you're really focused on player safety, you cannot make a decision until you find out what happens to DeMar Hamlet. And, and I think the final, final piece is that there are rules as far as like tie breaking. So I don't think that there's any issue as far as, okay, well, how would this get resolved? Just go to NFL.com and there's like a 20 page document on all the contingency plans because the NFL operationally is, you know, unmatched as far as contingencies. So uh, I think that the most important thing that all of us have to realize is that a first round buy or home field advantage is not more important than a player's life. So just cancel the game, don't play it. Yeah, Corey and Mara, thank you both so much for getting us up to speed this morning. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.